All right. All right. Um, I'm just going to touch base on a, on, on a lot of technology that relate to mobile phones. Most of you have figured this out, that mobile phones are the most rapidly adopted technology in human history. The challenge uh, is figuring out what works in your context. There are a great, great many options. And I'm going to switch mics, because this one's a little quirky. I can't So, here we go. Uh, more mobile phones than toothbrushes in the world. More, I think, probably more mobile phone subscriptions than people in the world. Uh, people are constantly looking at their phones, just to look at the person across the table from you, and then look in the mirror. Uh, it's just the case around the world, and this isn't just a smartphone thing, this is also a feature phone thing. We talk about media, there's all kinds of media, social media, visual media, texting, SMS, uh, there's just a lot of ways that you can actually connect and distribute content through these crazy devices that everyone has. So we, we'll look at this in two really categories. One is, is how do you use your mobile in kind of relationship sharing? This is evangelism and discipleship and parenting or whatever. And then another one is a bit more of a broadcasting model and then we'll just comment on security. In terms of personal sharing, I think what we would recommend is just kind of, you know, that first Peter thing, be ready in season and out to give the reason for the hope that's in you. you, you you've got this device that some have referred to as the sum of all knowledge in, the, you know, in your purse, your palm, or your pocket. Make sure that it's not just there for texting and calling and whatever and checking your Facebook page, but that you have readily shareable materials that you can easily and naturally introduce in any context. I will say Jim Green is one of my heroes on this one. Jim is probably as much as anybody the guy who's always figuring out the way to just introduce, oh hey by the way I've got this film that says something about that. Uh, and then think about, for audio, MP3 is your standard format. Video, you can think 3GP or MP4. One's for smartphones, one's for feature phones. Two gigabyte micro SD card. Look what you can get on this thing. That's a lot of content. And still have half the space left over, and that'll cost you just a couple of bucks for the hardware. And Jim's willing to give you the audio or the visuals for free. So here's one of the ways you can communicate kind of person to person. This is more of a feature phone thing. Bluetooth thing is just one of the technologies that feature phones have, smartphones have. Uh, it, it, more so in a feature phone world, people are always using that, oh, Bluetooth that to me. More in a smartphone world, you have firewalls that are built in between to protect the intellectual property of companies. So, but less so where you have Bluetooths in the market. Here's just an app uh, that is one way to share all kinds of content from device to device. Um, there are personal Wi-Fi devices. Um, there's a variety of those, like this thing, you know, you've got the micro. This is, I think, essentially the dev stream, is it not, Calvin? Yeah, so you've got, you can, for like 30 or 40 bucks, and I don't know, Calvin, it'd be interesting to hold up. Where is your dev stream, by the way? You know, it's just this little device that you can put a bunch of content on, and then you have a bunch of different outlets that allows you to connect with others and distribute that content through. Uh, micro USB flash drives. Um, this is just near field communication. Most uh, phones have that capability. So that's if you're connecting with somebody on a one-to-one -one basis. There's just a number of ways that you can connect with them and give them content. If you're thinking broadcasting, okay, here's a couple ideas. Think about apps. Um, this is a little list of, and this is like a little bit old, but like from, I think the Google uh, store on apps for prayer for, for a Muslim audience. I mean, there's zillions and zillions of apps that are out there. Uh, more on our side of the fence, you know, the industry leader, if you will, was the LifeChurch.tv group that One Hope works really closely with. So, you know, that app has been downloaded. It was always been like a top 10 iStore app or iTunes app 
or App Store app. And then when, uh, when One Hope put out the Bible app for kids, like within six months, how many downloads did you have? Over five million. I mean, that's not bad. And where are you at today? I mean, you're double that? Eleven. Um, so anyway, the, the God bless LifeChurch.tv and the Green family and others who've been innovating in that space. Um, the Jesus film, not unlike LifeChurch.tv, uh, has spent a fair amount of money to make the Jesus film app available to the world. Um, they've got all these resources that they're willing to make available, but then they've built the platform that allows you to easily communicate that. The way that I've seen Jim do it a lot, he'll have a conversation with a waitress or a taxi driver and, you know, figure out if there's any ethnicity involved. Oh, hey, I have a film in your language. And he'll go through the app with the person right there and say, look, here, oh, you're from Madagascar. Let's go to Madagascar. Oh, let's see what we have. Oh, watch this. And then the app has a little built-in feature. Oh, I can email that to you. So in at least a U.S. audience where you can't Bluetooth, you can just email the link directly. Uh, if you're actually making an app, keep in mind your audience, uh, especially in developing countries. Uh, there's still the large majority of phones are feature phones, uh, which means in a lot of places they're going to have limited access to the internet. So. You know, you want to think about apps that are actually functional once you're disconnected from the internet. Scripture App Builder does that really well. Another way of uh, broadcasting is bluecasting. This is Renew's Lightstream. Lightstream is, is, was pretty expensive. They're trying to bring the price down to make it a little more accessible. Uh, but you can load that thing up with tons of content and then have like a big distribution footprint within, I can't remember. I don't know if it's 100 or 200 feet, but it reaches, then you've got things like the Dove Stream, so that if you, when it's on, you'll know that it's on, because it will try to take your Wi-Fi connection. Um, a lot of feature phones have an FM radio function built in. Like, there you go, think about that. That phone is also a radio receiver, crazy. And then, of course, you know, the one thing that we all are at least aware of is social media. There's all kinds of things. Um, that are always kind of competing. We just had a little conversation that Vine is kind of on the, on the down low, but you know, Facebook's trying to take over the space from YouTube, so there's, the stakes are high. There's a lot of money in this thing, but that just means there's also a lot of opportunity for you to put your content out there. You want to think about mobile web. If you're designing, an, and, and Calvin touched on this, bottom line is, yeah, I, depending on where you are, a very significant chunk of traffic to anything that you put on the internet is going to come through a mobile device. So if it's not suited to be read and found in, on a mobile device, you're going to have a significant drop off in your traffic. You just, you need to have web responsive design. Quick comment on security. Um, the crazy thing about phones is once you turn that thing on, like you are extremely traceable. Uh, there really is no such thing as complete security on a phone. And this is just the way it is. If you're in a restricted country, those governments pay third-party corporations a lot of money to have very highly developed technologies that allow them to look, listen, and see, and monitor everything that goes through your mobile device. It is what it is. Uh, we did a seminar on this at one of our mobile ministry forums a few years ago with an expert, and finally at the end of it said, well, what's the best thing you do if you really want to be safe? He didn't even say turn off your phone. He said you have to not only turn off your phone, you have to take the battery out. Well, at some point you get, <laughs> you get the law of diminished returns. Well, why do I have a phone? Bottom line is you got to be uber, uber careful about security. If you're taking a phone into a situation, uh, you just have to, you know, be careful what content's on there because not only could it be physically taken away from you and then searched, but much more so is that it's going to be searched by those who are monitoring traffic. People that have iPhones, you can purchase, there's two levels of uh, security on RF proof bags. You put it in a bag, it creates a Faraday shield and no signal can get in or out. All right. Well, there you go. So there, there, there are countermeasures. So yeah, if you need to know, you better figure out. Look into those countermeasures. I would still just operate with the assumption 
that your phone is a, is a pretty porous form of, of data and, uh, and privacy and security. Uh, couple thoughts, where do you go? One of the things that I'm involved with and some of us in the room, uh, this thing we've called the Mobile Ministry Forum, it's just a coalition of about 150 organizations who we meet, we gather, we resource, we try to find out who's doing what, what's working where, and kind of push those best practices and products out to others. Uh, one of the things we developed recently was this little, it's a little workbook, kind of a, of a, of a guide called Your Phone's God's Glory. You can download this for free here. Um, that site, if you just want to see any of our resources, go to mobmin.org. Uh, we offer an online course, curriculums, gatherings. At the end of EMDC next year, we'll have a two-day mobile ministry forum gathering in Holland. Uh, and that's all I got. So, I could probably entertain one or two quick questions or comments if there is, and I don't know if uh, I can get somebody to help me with the roaming mic here. Is there a comment or question? All right. I got it. Yeah, next time. Go ahead. So is the DoveStream more secure then? DoveStream. Is the DoveStream more secure? Is the Dove uh, is it secure? Is that what you're asking? Uh, traceable. Traceable. Uh, traceable is different. Traceable only if you have they have special equipment. It has to be equipment that can measure a Wi-Fi signal to a minute, uh, yeah, coordinates. That's the only way. So your average traffic cop does not have one of those or something like that, right? or a, a guy on a train or something. Uh, yeah, so it's fairly difficult to see where or to know where that signal is coming from. And that's another great thing uh, in terms of using it in places where it's not easy to share your faith openly. One more question? 